Hey guys, welcome to the Rusty Beauty's Garage. Here is Rusty. Here is the beauty. <laughs> well, this week I'm on vacation with my family and I was and I wasn't planning to edit the video but the weather kind of crapped out so I have time to sit down and edit a little. However, I figured I don't have a beginning or ending for my video, so here I am shooting one. I'm sorry for the bumps. It's gonna be a short video. I hope I don't have much time to edit the video. I hope the sun comes out soon. But I have a lot more video that I can show you. So once I'm back from vacation, we're gonna edit the rest of it because we have a lot. I mean, uh, the 1970 DR6 is almost ready to be uh, go back on the road. Anyways, let me show you what I have for you today. Okay, it's another day. Nick is working on his Miata. I'm kind of tired of interior work, to be honest. Like, I know that I have to run some wiring there, but I still don't have boots for the transmission cover. And I don't know, I'm just gonna leave that alone for now. But if you remember, we had the problem with the alternator here. So the problem was that the alternator was charging just fine but the field wire for whatever reason was getting 18 volts and the higher the rpm it was going even higher than that the output wire that was going to the battery was 13 14 volts it was normal but the field wire was getting such a high voltage and the light on the dash was coming on as the engine was running and actually the more you rev it the higher the brighter it became unfortunately uh, that leads to something internal with the alternator which somebody mentioned in the comments is possibly one of the diodes was blown uh, but to be honest I don't know much about these alternators I mean I've never dealt with anything internally of an alternator and I knew that I had the same alternator on one of the engines that somebody donated to me <laughs> but that engine sat outside literally in a bush for a while so you can see what happens I, I took the alternator out of it but you see what's coming out of the alternator and guess what it seized <laughs> so this is not gonna work but i'm thinking possibly the internals here might be in a better shape than these ones so i don't know i guess we should take it apart and see in the first place if we can unseize it maybe we can just unseize it and clean it and use it i don't know but if we can't unseize it or if it is if the bearings are too far gone then we might try to take the internals out otherwise i have a different alternator that i can use but it's for a later car which means we're gonna have to change these plugs here eliminate some of the wires because they are different for the later cars. I have the alternator and the plug, so that's always an option to put a new alternator, but I don't want to modify the wires. So let's see what we can do here. All right, unfortunately this surgery didn't go too well because what happened was I unsoldered the three wires that came from the windings of the alternator but while unsoldering this one here it unsoldered from down here as well you see it was soldered to this plate soldered or glued I'm not really sure quite frankly I don't want to go too deep and learn about alternators at this point eventually I'm gonna have to learn I guess but 
don't really have the time now so unfortunately this part is ruined but i'm hoping that the other alternator has issue with this part maybe the brushes underneath or whatever this is so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna replace this part in the other alternator and we're gonna test it again because because apparently the output here was 13 volts 13 14 volts on the alternator the problem was with the field wire which is one of these three outputs here so that's why i'm thinking that this is the part that failed i know not very educational video it's gonna be trial and error but that's the fastest way to solve this problem right now i don't want to spend hours uh, studying alternators right now so i'm not gonna be proud of this repair if it works <laughs> i'm gonna be less proud of it if it doesn't work of course but yeah that's what we're gonna do Okay, the alternator is installed and plugged in and I also put a new battery that John bought and this plastic cover so later we're gonna work on the straps that hold the battery in place we have those I don't like when the terminals are on this side of the battery I much rather have them on the back because here they're too close to this mounting strip so we're gonna have to make sure that nothing touches there i also installed a new battery cable i run it this way like many times i see it run this way together with this wiring which we have a bracket we have to fasten this one this one here too but i don't know why the battery cable needs to be run that way too because it's too close to the shaft for the to the throttle shaft and it might cause rubbing and short circuits i put a grommet on this hole here and i run it through that place and later we will see maybe we're gonna fasten it here somehow to make sure it stays out of the latch we need to also find a bolt for here to tighten that but it went pretty tight i had to bang it with my palm so i think we're good now and we can try to start it and see if the alternator light is gonna go off and if it is gonna keep charging and all that so let's see the alternator light is on now <laughs> Okay, so unfortunately that didn't eliminate the error from our trial and error experiment so unfortunately this was not the problem obviously the rectifier was the problem and it is a cheap part look at this on most motors you can buy it for 17 dollars the problem is we're gonna have to wait for it eventually so i'm gonna talk to john we need to order boots as well so let's see if we want to order stuff or we want to replace the alternator because i have a new alternator it was meant to go into my tr4 but i can wait with my tr4 and we can install it in john's car so i'm gonna talk to him and we will see all right i just spoke to john and initially he said okay let's order the rectifier since we have to order the boot for the transmission anyway but then yeah you're right you noticed right um this rectifier is a three connector and we need the two connector one which is the one above and na i don't know what that stands for but looks like it's not available so we're going with uh later alternator conversion which i already have i have to pull it out from my tr4 packages because i 
order, then I got a lot of parts for my TR4, including an alternator. So we're gonna pull that out. We're gonna have to modify the wiring. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. And that problem is gonna be solved. And then we can move on to doors and stuff because we have a package here. It's a big package, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> we have some parts for the doors. Okay, here's the new alternator and this is the old one and we're gonna have to transfer the pulley because it comes without the pulley. And on a second thought, this is actually a better idea to use this alternator because this one, as far as I can see somewhere I read, uh, where was it? Here, it says 15 ACR. I'm pretty sure this means 15 amp which is pretty low considering that John wants to use an amplifier in this car with the stereo and speakers and stuff like that this one is 36 so that's actually a better idea okay still spins now we also got a plug for it so of course we're gonna have to modify our wiring all right before we do the wiring let's see what the wiring does actually <laughs> so up to 72 69 70 and 72 tr6 used this alternator with five connectors in the back the two big ones are positive that goes through the yam meter to the battery and the other one is ground, grounded directly to the engine block. The smaller ones, one is the field wire, the other one, I don't know why it needs to be externally connected to this terminal, why didn't they just connect it internally, I have no idea. But the field wire is connected to the warning light and on the other side it's connected to the ignition switch. And then the third one is also connected directly to the battery, this is a smaller wire, this is a big wire. When you turn the ignition on but you don't start the car the warning light gets power from the ignition switch on one side and on the other side it gets ground from the alternator because the alternator is not turning and through the windings and all that we have ground here and the light comes on once you start the engine the field terminal senses the power that comes from the ignition switch through the light and once it senses it it starts charging and then it sends 12 volt back to the warning light and now the warning light has 12 volt on one side and 12 volt on the other and it turns off that's how it works if, if something happens inside the alternator and stops charging again we get ground on this side and the light comes on for later tr6 73 and later that's what they did now we only have three terminals here Two of them, the two big ones, are connected directly to the battery through this hub here. And the third one is the field wire that goes to the warning light. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna eliminate the ground. Of course, the big wire that goes to the battery is still gonna be connected to the big terminal. This wire that is also connected to the battery, we're gonna connect to the second terminal. right here and the field wire which is also a small wire we're going to eliminate this bridge and we're just going to connect it here to the terminal the small terminal the two big ones are going to take the big brown wire the smaller brown wire and the smaller terminal is going to take the field wire okay so what i did here is i crimped them but i also soldered them because I just don't trust this crimping. These look like really flimsy. They work, but whatever. So here on the connector, doesn't really matter which big one goes where because they are connected inside. They are one and the same thing. So that goes in and it clicks inside. So it doesn't come out when you push the connector to connect it to the alternator I hope you can hear the click okay. a 
have nothing to push it with. If I only had a shop full of tools, <laughs> you know. Okay, found something. <laughs> a broken pencil. There you go. Okay, they're all the way in. And then there's little cover in the back. Perfect, so now we are ready to plug it into the alternator. So I'm gonna install it and I'll bring you back to test it together. Right, it's installed, let's plug it in. Hopefully it's not gonna give us troubles. Well, actually it's backwards, so it's like this, okay. So. First of all, let's see if the light is gonna come on. Yes, that's good. Now let's see if it's gonna come off when it starts. Yes, I know, she runs like a crap, she's cold. Yeah, also I think this distributor is not great. We might go back to the original distributor. Anyway, let's measure if she charges. Okay, so like I said, it's a short video today, but uh, stay tuned for more. In the next episode, I believe we're gonna do the doors. I have a lot of footage on the doors. I know I've shown that before, but I'm gonna show it again in detail how to install the mainly the weather strips because they are pretty hard to install it's the nightmare for some people so that's going to be the subject of the next video so thanks again for watching commenting subscribing sharing and supporting me on uh, patreon and paypal and i'll see you or we will see you in the next one say bye say bye he says bye <laughs>